going to be using this big piece of cherry wood for this project and I've already marked out where I'm going to cut this on the bandsaw. I'm just going to take off a 5 inch square, a 5 inch square, and then two of these 3 inch squares and that's because I'm just going to glue these together just right here to form an L and this board is 2 inches wide and I want it to be the same this way as it is this way so that's why these are three inches so when I glue them up here it'll measure five inches this way and five inches that way Okay, here's how this is going to get clamped together. I'm going to have my two bookends here, and there's going to be glue here and glue there, and a sheet of notebook paper will be in between with glue as well, like that. And apparently paper in between will help it come apart easier because this is going to be a split wood turning. In other words, I'm just going to turn the whole thing as a whole, and when it's finished, I'll split it in half to give me my two bookends. So, let's go ahead and get started. I just went ahead and knocked off some of these harsh corners on the bandsaw to make it a little bit easier to turn. And one other thing to mention before I put it in between centers is that it's pretty critical that your midway point where the center will touch is of course halfway between here and here but it also should be on the glue line so that you have two even halves. I should probably bring up too that my lathe has this little dip in. The bed does not extend all the way underneath the the, uh, head, the headstock here. So I'm putting the larger side there to give me a little bit more room with the tool rest on the other side. I'm also going to be sure not to put the spurs on my spur center uh, directly parallel or on the glue line because I don't want to split it in half. This is for sure going to be one of the scarier wood turnings that I've done because you're going to be turning an awful lot of air and I'm very critical as to how well these uh, glue joints are going to actually hold up. I'm going to be using the nice big heavy bowl gouge for this.
Okay, the whole ends are pretty much cut off now. So, now I'm just gonna have to start bringing this round. They say there's a rule for wood turning that for every inch your tool is hanging over the tool rest, you should have at least seven inches of handle to cover for it. So I'm covered with that. I can probably go a good three inches off the tool rest. But if you're working with short tools, be sure to bring the tool rest up as close as you can, especially on something like this. much thought. Um, I basically thought to glue the pieces together and do the split wood turning to get two halves of the bookend kind of thing, but I didn't realize that since the longer part of it, the bigger portion of this is sort of rectangular, it would never turn perfectly round. So knowing that, if I tried to get it perfectly round, it wouldn't be right. It would probably be the same diameter as the top part of it, and I didn't want that. So. I just left it rectangular and just sanded the sides of it flat. sanding with a hundred grit just with a random orbital sander and I did this to get most of the tear out out of there because I didn't want to hand sand that and I also used my dust collection and I sanded through to 600 with paste wax to try to keep the dust down but this is kind of messy so be sure to stand off to the side of your lathe because it will kind of spray up at you and it just makes a big mess Okay, I just cleaned up the top of that with a spindle gouge, and I also flattened off the bottom of this just using the disc sander. Okay, so time to split this thing. Uh, I will either have a wonderful success and be very pleased, or I will completely destroy two hours of work. Side note, use a junkie screwdriver. Oh, just like that. Look at that. Wow. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Oh, weird. Look, it's just peeling off. Weird. Okay. That was unexpectedly, that went really well. So, I'm um, just going to clean up these two faces now and finish it all up. So, these bookends came out pretty cool in my opinion. I've never tried a split wood turning. This was the first one I've ever done. I think this is a pretty cool concept. I think you can do a lot of stuff with this. Uh, the wood I used was cherry, and I think I explained earlier in the video that because this was rectangular, I couldn't turn it into a round and still get like an L shape. So, I had to leave these flat spots on the sides. But they had these rough chainsaw marks from the board that I had started with, so I decided to leave it and just sort of sand over the top and finish over it to sort of try to enhance that. So I think just little stuff like this gives this piece a lot of character, and I think it's pretty cool. Um, please check in the description. There will be a link to my eBay store. Go over there. I have some pens and a couple of bowls up. 
So go over there, check it out, and if you don't want to buy anything, that's perfectly fine. Uh, tell your friends about it though. Again, all the money from there goes directly to a bandsaw. Any money that I make on my eBay, I put away, and all that money is going to go towards a new 17 inch grizzly bandsaw that I need pretty badly in my shop. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please subscribe. I put new woodworking videos up every Friday. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Any suggestions or anything you've done with split wood turning, I think it'd be pretty cool to hear. Okay, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next Friday.